All right, this one says, we've got a 10 centimeter object placed 40 centimeters to the left of a converging lens of focal length 20 centimeters. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down my focal points for that first lens. I'll call this one lens one. Notice that it is a converging lens. And we could put two focal points down for it. which we can call F1 and F1. All right, now there's another converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters, which is 25 centimeters to the right of the first lens. All right, so this is converging lens two. And I gotta put focal points down 10 centimeters to the left. And 10 centimeters to the right. Okay. Next, I want to try to construct an image for that first lens, pretending like the second lens isn't even there. All right, so how would we do that? Well, we have to draw rays from the tip of our object toward the lens. Now one of the important rays is the parallel ray. That ray is going to be bent through focal point one. All right, so let's bend that ray through focal point one. All right, we'll have another ray it goes from the tip of the object through the center of lens one. All right, that looks pretty good. That's all we really need for constructing our first image. So it looks like our first image is formed at 40 centimeters, normally it would be a real image. But the problem is that we have a lens between lens one and this image. So the question is like, would light beams really pass through that image? And the answer ends up being no. They wouldn't really pass through that image because they're gonna be bent before they ever get a chance to do so. All right, so let's just write down that, you know, this is our original object. And then this thing that's formed is gonna end up being a virtual image. All right. So now let's see what happens uh, when the second lens is involved. We really want to look for certain rays that, um, that have properties that we know where they're going to bend to. And so you see these two rays here that are coming through lens two, there's nothing special about them. Like they can't be used to easily construct where the final image would be. 
So what I want to do is I want to go even farther and come up with every single ray that might be relevant. In the past, we had drawn one more ray in these constructions, one that goes through the first focal point and then hits the lens. And then we said that that ray would come out parallel, if you remember that. All right, that third ray also helps us construct the image for lens one. But another thing that it does is that it comes in parallel to lens two. And that is a special situation because when a ray comes in parallel to a lens, then it should bend through a special point, which would be the focal point of that lens. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna draw a ray now. that goes through that second focal point. Okay. And yeah, that's what we're looking for with these types of constructions is can we creatively find some justification for where that final image will end up being. Now so far I've only got one ray for my final image. So I just gotta go a little bit farther and just do a little bit more work see if I can justify where that final image will be. So there's one more ray here, which would be important. What ray is it? Well, we could draw a ray that comes to that first image. But how does it get there? It gets there by going through the center of lens two. There would be some ray that would do that. Now why is that an important ray? Well, a ray that goes through the center of lens two would not bend. Okay, so that ray actually is one of the final rays. that helps us form the image, is the idea. There we go. Okay, that looks good for our construction now. So I'm able to now determine that the final image would be located here. Now we just want the mathematics to agree with what we found. final image. Notice that it is inverted and it would be real as well because the rays really do go through that point. Next we can do the formulas and just verify that that, that really is the location of the final image. We'll do the thin lens formula for lens one. Our object distance here was
40 centimeters. So our image ended up being at 40 centimeters. Okay, that was this distance here. This is our thin lens. formula for lens one. All right, next we want to use the formula for figuring out what our object two distance is. So for that, we had used this in the past. Di1 plus Do2 equals the lens separation. Interestingly, that formula can still work here. So we'll put 40 centimeters in. We need to know our lens separation, which is this distance here. It looks like 25 centimeters. And then we'll see an interesting result. The object distance becomes negative. And that's actually what we need. When a virtual image ends up on the opposite side of lens 2 as the original object, then we have to use a negative object distance in that case. So then when we go to do the thin lens formula, for lens 2, we got to plug in that negative object distance. All right, so we'll get 1 over negative 15. Our focal length was positive 10 for this lens. And I get a final image distance of 6 centimeters. Now that does agree with the picture. Right, so like here Our DO2 is negative 15. This distance here is DI2, which is 6 centimeters, so it looks good. All right, we'd also want to find, of course, the magnification and the final height of our image. Total magnification will be M1 times M2, which is negative DI1 over DO1 times negative DI2 over DO2. So we would get negative 40 over 40 
times negative six over negative 15. It ends up being negative 0 0.4 for a magnification. And since our original object had a height of 10, our final object will have a height of 4. But it's negative because it's inverted. <laughs>